Disasters can strike a community or a whole country very quickly and without warning. It seems that we hear almost daily that floods, hurricanes, storms, mudslides, accidents, and civil unrest or war occur somewhere in the world. A disaster can be described as any human-made or natural event that causes destruction and devastation that cannot be relieved without assistance. Disasters can create emergencies that require health professionals to act quickly and effectively. Emergency preparedness is a key function and role for public health professionals whose primary responsibility is to promote and protect the health of populations. Such professionals, along with the government, prepare, assess, and propose plans to deal effectively and efficiently with an impending disaster. This video will focus on the activities of public health professionals and their partners as they illustrate the stages of emergency management in a recent pandemic influenza outbreak. The stages of emergency planning, as outlined by the Canadian government, will be used throughout the video. However, one should bear in mind that these stages can be universally applied to any country and to any disaster or emergency. Pandemics are considered to be natural disasters that create emergency situations, which could rapidly escalate into disasters with high rates of morbidity and mortality. An influenza, such as the one caused by H1N1, is a highly infectious disease that attains the level of a pandemic when sustained transmission of the virus affects large numbers of people worldwide. It is the World Health Organization that will declare if a particular health problem is at the level of a pandemic. The history of pandemics is fascinating. One of the most famous pandemics was the Black Death, or the Plague, which occurred in the 14th century. It reportedly killed half of the world's population at that time. More recently, in the 20th century, pandemics have included the Spanish flu, the Hong Kong flu, and the HIV-AIDS pandemic. HIV continues to spread and cause devastation around the world. Let's look more closely at the H1N1 pandemic, which is featured in this video. In March and April of 2010, Mexico reported an unusually large number of incidents of respiratory illness, which was confirmed to be caused by the H1N1 influenza virus. Shortly after, more cases appeared in the southern United States, and Mexico was believed to be the point source for these cases. Very quickly, in fact by May, close to 2,000 cases of H1N1 were confirmed in 21 countries. The vast majority of these cases were individuals between 5 and 29 years of age. By June, the World Health Organization had declared the H1N1 influenza to be a pandemic. This was not because of the severity of the illness, but because of its very rapid spread. In addition to dealing with the prevention and spread of H1N1, countries were also dealing with the affected individuals and families themselves. However, planning for such a pandemic influenza had occurred long before this pandemic was ever declared. Canada and the world has been in pandemic planning for more than a decade. And it starts with committees, and it starts with committees at every level, uh, in the hospitals, in the community, uh, provincial, territorial, national, and uh, global. Uh, so that um, they often worked in isolation, so that uh, at the beginning, people were doing what they thought they needed to do. They all knew that they had to do something, but weren't exactly sure what. And over the past few years, there has been more and more coordination between different committees at different levels. So it was really only in the past year or so when we really began to see that, that there would be a pandemic virus. We didn't think it would be the one it was, but we knew that one was coming, that people began putting more effort into operationalizing the plans. So that when the pandemic hit, um, we had a lot of plans already in place, a lot of uh, stockpiling already in place, a lot of policies and procedures drafted, but it was only when the virus actually hit that we knew what needed to be done and really operationalized it.
It's important to prepare for a pandemic the same way it is to prepare for anything else. It's better to be proactive than reactive. We want to minimize the impact of the pandemic, reduce mortality, uh, make sure people have the supplies they need, they know what they need to do and they're able to do them. Uh, that kind of reduces the panic at the time and makes the whole process a whole lot more effective when you're actually in the pandemic. Let's look now at the process of emergency management and follow this process as it pertained to the H1N1 pandemic. The goal of emergency management planning is to strengthen resilience. This goal is attained by way of an integrated and comprehensive approach that includes the four pillars of prevention and mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. However, before we look more closely at these stages, we should address who is involved in preparing for an emergency such as the H1N1 pandemic. It's a cast of thousands <laughs> involved in pandemic planning. Um, internally, within a health authority, generally the lead for pandemic planning happens within public health. Uh, but then we would be working, and over the, over the last three to four years before we were actually into the pandemic, we had been doing a lot of pandemic planning with acute care, with long-term care. Uh, there was a liaison committee with community partners, uh, such as municipalities, school districts, personal care homes, child care centers, those groups. Well, there are different types of public health professionals involved in preparing for a pandemic. So we can start at the medical officer of health, who would be responsible mostly for policies and uh, coordinating communication. There was also the frontline workers at the other end of the spectrum, so the community health nurses, public health nurses, uh, they would be involved with vaccination clinics and with public education. There'd be managers who would be coordinating the activities throughout, and there'd be epidemiologists who would be coordinating the surveillance and uh, reports, so we would know what's going on. Even businesses were involved in pandemic plans. They all had plans of their own. Uh, what to do in their own particular environment to reduce transmission and what to do with people who were sick and who could cover for them and that sort of thing. Within the university we had plans on what do you do in, if your teachers are sick, if your students are sick, uh, and so on. So almost everybody in society had some kind of planning. Certainly the health sector was the most elaborate, but everyone knew it was coming and did at least something such as putting out a uh, hand sanitizer or uh, wipes to clean surfaces and, and so on. The first pillar of emergency management is prevention and mitigation, two activities that are carried out with the intention of reducing risk. For example, in the case of H1N1, it was important to assess and report the beginning of the pandemic, then to educate the public about the possible effects of the pandemic and what they could do to decrease their vulnerability. Globally, the main initiative was actually surveillance, to identify what the virus was, where it was occurring. Uh, without surveillance, we would have never have gone to a, a level six pandemic. Um, and so they needed to know where it was and if it was the same strain, that it was an unusual strain that it hadn't been seen before. There had been a lot of preparation in the labs uh, throughout the world in terms of their ability to identify the strain and isolate it and report that back to WHO. So I'd say global efforts were largely surveillance, whereas uh, individual country levels was more about the care, the vaccination um, programs and uh, public education. Although globally, there was a lot about vaccination development as well, because certainly the companies that produce the vaccine are global in nature and had to respond to a global request for it. So there were a few different things that were done to prepare the general public for the pandemic. A lot of it evolved around uh, red education. So what did they need to do and how did they need to do that? Uh, so stay at home if you were sick was a key message, uh, hand hygiene and uh, cover your cough. Those were our key messages in the province and they're pretty much what the messages were worldwide. And there were different ways of getting them to do that. So, for example, you would see the alcohol-based